So today we will discuss uh, one of the most important chapter of uh, plant reproduction. And uh, all of you are quite aware about the fact that uh, in case of plant reproductions, the things is uh, like uh, microsporogenesis, megasporogenesis, pollination, fertilization, uh, developments of seeds, embryo. So these are the things what we have to discuss. So out of those things, the very first things today I am just going to discuss is the microsporogenesis. Okay. So ये सबको तो मालूम होगा कि the moment we talk about microsporogenesis, the important thing from where we have to begin is the stamens. Now stamens, you know, typically it consists of three things. One is the filament, second is the connective, and third is the anther. Right. So that is the structure of anther, you can say. So within the anther, if I just take a cross section of an anther. Then what we can see that anther is a typical bilobed structure, as you can see there. This is a bilobed structure, right? And since it is a bilobed structure, so that's why we call them dithicus. Dithicus means that the number of lobes is going to be two. Okay. So in these two loops, what we will see that there are four sporangia, right? So that's why it is also called as a tetragonal tetragonal structure so within this tetragonal structure one particular structure represents one microsporangia okay so this is the site where pollen sac or microsporangia develops and the process is actually called as a microsporogenesis so what could be the starting point for the microsporogenesis the starting point is the diploid microspore mother cell which Undergoes the reductional division and eventually, after reductional division, it is going to form uh, microspores. This is what we call microsporogenesis, which we will see in the later slide. Let's move ahead. So, as I told you, that uh, microsporogenesis is the formation of a spore. Okay. So, how does this formation occurs? Let's discuss a bit about it. Suppose we Take one particular cell, right? This is the starting cell. So what happens in this starting cell? There is a transverse division, and as a result of transverse division, two cells are formed. The upper cell is actually called as a sporogenous cell, okay? And the lower cell actually is called as a parietal cell, right? Now this sporogenous cell. Later on, develop into spore mother cell. Find it? This spore mother cell is a diploid structure. Now, this parietal later on forms the anther wall. Okay, so anther wall is also going to be a diploid structure. So later on, we will see that this spore will enter into a meiotic division. Okay, and as a result of meiotic division. Haploid spores are going to be formed, right? So this is what microsporogenesis is all about. So have a look at this slide. So what we know that the tissue from where the starting happens is actually called as a sporogenous tissue, which occupies the center of each microsporangium. Okay. So, in the course of development, it is going to form diploid microspore mother cell, and as I told you, it undergoes meiotic division to form haploid microspores. So, the formation of haploid microspore form diploid microspore mother cell is actually called as a microsporogenesis. Later on, what happens? That microspore develops into a pollen grains and may gametophyte. Okay, so this is the structure. Or this is the uh, path through which the development happened. So we can see that uh, this microspore mother cell is actually the last stage of sporophytic generation in angiospermic plant. Okay, and as far as microspore mother cell is concerned, so this is the uh, first. This is not microspore mother cell; it is a microspore cell. So microspore cell. Is the first stage of the male gametophyte. Why? Because it is a haploid structure, and this is a diploid structure. Okay. Have a look at this anther. 
Now, what are the important things you see that here anther wall is shown? Okay. So, in case of anther wall, what happens? It is a four layered structure, my it? it is a four layer structure. What are those layers? The innermost layer is actually called as a tapetum. So, this is the innermost layer. Now, above the innermost layer, then there is an endothesium. Okay. Now, after endothesium, what will happen? There is a middle layer. Okay. And uppermost is actually called as a epidermis. This is actually called as a epidermis. So, what are the sequence? The sequence we can say, or let's take a white bow. Anther wall consists of four layers. The very first layer is epidermis. The second layer is endothesium. The third layer, what we call middle layer. And the fourth layer is actually called as a tapetum. Okay. Now once I can go to the slide. But before that, let me tell you that as far as the function of these structure are concerned, uh, the first three structure are primarily protective. So all these three layers are basically protective in nature. Okay? And this is, is nutritive. We will discuss more about tapetum. But before that, let's once again go to the diagram. Have a look at the placement of all these layers. Now you see, in the inner side, there is a pollen mother cell. Okay? So these pollen mother cell requires a nutrition for their development. So the nutrition is going to be provided by just outermost layer cell. And this layer cell, we know, this is known as a tapetum. Okay? Now tapetum is followed by middle layer. And then middle layer is going to be followed by endothesium. Now one of the most important thing in case of endothesium is that it consists of pectic material. Now there is a very much significance of this pectic material. The significance is this that due to presence of this pectic material, it helps in breaking open of the anther wall. Because you know, microspore or pollen grills will be released only and only if the microspore is going to be broken down. So it can be broken down only with the help of endothesium. So the role of the endothesium is just to help in dehiscence or opening of the anther wall so that the microspores or pollen grills can open. Okay. Now let's discuss more about the tapetum. Tapetum is very important very important from a uh, cytological point of view also. Now as you know that tapetum basically it provides nutrition to developing microspores. Microspore or microspore mother cell. Okay. So the important point is that this tapetum cell is known for very special cell division and the name of the cell division is endomitosis. Okay. Now what is the specific thing about endomitosis? This is a cell division which is known for nuclear division but no cytoplasmic division. So endomitosis is known for presence of nuclear division. Okay. But cytoplasmic division is absent or we can say cytokinesis. Cytokinesis is absent. Okay. So as a result what will happen? Since nuclear division is going to happen then what will happen? That the genetic material is going to increase or we can say genetic material become double, right? So this genetic material forms more and more protein, okay? So the more genetic material helps in forming more and more protein, right? Helps in the formation of, okay? And one of the another important thing which, which we'll also study later that it also helps in the formation of the pollen exine. Okay. So this is the entire function of tapetum. So you can see there the function of tapetum. Once again I would like to repeat. So tapetum is known for providing nutrition to the developing microspores. They are known for endomyotic cell division. Here nuclear division occurs but there is no cytokinase. It means there is no cell division. So naturally the number of genetic material or the number of chromosome is going to increase. And if the genetic material is more, what will happen? It will, it will help in the formation of more and more proteins. 
And another important function of tapetum is that it also helps in the formation of pollen exine. Okay. So this is how the anther is look like. Now let's talk about microgametogenesis. Now we have seen that the formation of a spore, that is a microspore, for microspore mother cell was called as a microsporogenesis. Okay. From microspore till the formation of a male gamete. The entire period of development is actually called as a microgametogenesis. So what should be the starting point? The starting point should be a microspore. And what should be the ending point? The ending point should be a male gamete. And the, the male gamete is going to be formed, right? And eventually the male gamete will be released through pollen tube inside the ovule. So we will see all these things, okay? So the definition is quite clear in front of you that uh, Formation of male gamete from haploid microspore is called microgametogenesis. The most important thing is that that it is regarded as the first stage of the male gametophyte. Which one? The haploid microspore. Because before that there was a microspore mother cell and the micro, microspore mother cell was the last stage for the sporophyte. Because the sporophyte is a diploid. From a sporophyte the very first structure that is formed is a haploid microspore. Okay, so this haploid microspore is always considered as a first stage for the male gametophyte. Okay, so the haploid microspore or pollen grains actually represent the first stage of the male gametophyte. You know, pollen grains are normally released in a two nucleated stage. So let's try to understand what are those two nucleus. Okay, so this is the structure of microspore. Right? You can see there is a one mitotic division and as a result of mitotic division, a two cell is going to be formed. One what we call generative nucleus, second what we call vegetative nucleus, vegetative cell ya tube nucleus. Okay, so this structure later on modify into a pollen grain. So the changes you can see there, that the outer exine is there, inner intine is there, right? And then there is a larger uh, vegetative cell which is also this particular nuclei is actually called as a tube nuclei okay and there is a small generative cell and in between them there is a cell wall right and this cell wall is actually made up of callos yahan pe ek chhota sa concept hai ye always yaad rakhna ki kisi bhi plant cell ke andar mein yadi cell wall hoga kisi bhi plant cell ke andar mein ya plant cell chodo kisi bhi cell ke andar mein यदि कोई सेल वॉल है तो उसका केमिकल कंस्टिट्यूशन ऑलवेज एंड ऑलवेज कैलोस होगा ठीक है तो ये बात आप ऑलवेज याद रखना कुछ भी हो जाए उसके अंदर का कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन कैलोस होगा ओके okay? इसके साथ क्या है यहाँ पे क्या है देर इज अ जर्मपो और इसी जर्मपो से जो जर्मिनेशन होता है पॉलन ग्रेन्स का तो यहाँ से स्ट्रक्चर्स बाहर आता है ठीक है चलो अब आगे देखते हैं आगे हम लोग थोड़ा पॉलन के बारे में देखेंगे पॉलन ग्रेन्स के स्टडी को हम लोग पैलेनोलॉजी कहते हैं और इसका बहुत ज्यादा टेक्सोनॉमिक सिग्निफिकेंस है और टेक्सोनॉमिक सिग्निफिकेंस क्यों है क्योंकि पॉलन ग्रेन्स में जो पोर होता है जर्म पोर जिसको कि हम लोग कोलकोस भी कहते हैं उसी के आधार पे डिफरेंट टैक्सा को रिकोगनाइज किया गया है या डिफरेंट जो फैमिलीज हैं उनके पॉलन ग्रेन्स जो है वो एक यूनिक कैरेक्टर शो करते हैं सो डेट्स वाई दे हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल टेक्सोनॉमिक सिग्निफिकेंस जो पॉलन वॉल है उसके अंदर क्या होता है दो वॉल होता है एक बारी को हम लोग इंटाइन कहते हैं और अंदर वाले को हम लोग इंटाइन कहते हैं ओके नाउ अर्लियर वे आप डिस्कस कि जो टैपिटल सेल है वो क्या होता है एक्साइन बनाने में मदद करता है राइट right? तो टैपिटल सेल के अंदर क्या होता है वन मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग वॉट यू कॉल यूबिस बडीज दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन अपिटल सेल राइट सो दैट यूबिस बडीज हेल्प इन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द पॉलन एक्साइन ओके and as far as uh, the chemical composition of the exine is concerned it is made up of sporopollenin now you know sporopollenin is the toughest organic material known on this earth this is the toughest material theek hai to ye isko protection pradan karta hai aur as far as the uh, intain is concerned that is made up of tectocellulose okay uh, right now we have discussed that there is a germ pore in a pollen so this germ pole is actually called as a colpus right 
and interestingly what happens all monocots are monocolpid that means they have a one germ pore right but as far as the dicots are concerned they have a three germ pore which is actually called as a tricolpid now we are talking about development after pollination you know once the pollen grains are formed then what will happen that pollen grains will be transferred from male to female right or we can say from anther to stigma and this particular event is actually called as a pollination so pollination is all together a separate uh, sub topic we will discuss pollination later okay so here we are de discussing about the development of uh, the microspores or pollen grain so naturally it also includes those part of the development that is going to occur after pollination okay so the sequence of events after pollination are as follows the very first is that what will happen in time will grow out through the germ pore right and one in time will grow they will form a pollen tube okay now in a pollen tube the vegetative nucleus because we know very well that uh, in uh, pollen grains it is released in the two nuclear stages what was the two nucleus one was a generative cell second was a a uh, vegetative cell okay and uh, the nucleus of the vegetative cell is actually called as a, a, a tube nuclei okay so the very first uh, the cell which migrate into a pollen tube is the vegetative nucleus or tube nuclei as you can see in the diagram as well it grows so the tube nucleus is actually the very first cell which enters into later on what will happen that to uh, generative cell will migrate okay and once the generative cell will migrate what will happen the generative cell will divide by mitotic division and as a result two male gametes are going to be formed as you can see in the diagram these two male gametes are formed okay very interesting what happens the structure like this is going to be formed which is actually called as a callous plug so large number of callous plug is formed the objective of the callous plug is that that whatever the gamete that is formed it cannot go back right so callous plug is just going to act as a some sort of obstruction so that it to uh, ensures that the male gamete should remain at its terminal end so that is the very objective of the uh, callous plug so let's recap the entire event uh, what we have seen microspore mother cell this will go meiosis and as a result microspore is going to be formed so this entire event is actually called as a microsporogenesis so for microsporogenesis what will happen that microspore will go for mitosis this will form tube nuclei and generative nuclei then again generative nuclei generative nuclei will undergo mitosis and two male gamete is going to be formed this entire development that is the starting form microspore to the formation of the male gamete is actually called as a micro gametogenesis so many times the question is asked with reference to the number of nuclei the number of nuclear division with respect to microsporogenesis and micro gametogenesis i am sure all of you understand that the number of nuclear division in microsporogenesis is equal to 2 why it is equal to 2 because microsporogenesis involve meiosis and we know very well in case of meiosis there is meiosis 1 right and also there is a meiosis 2 and since there is a two division so that's why we are calling that number of nuclear division is always equal to 2 okay as far as the number of nuclear division in micro gametogenesis is concerned it is also 2 what are those two divisions the very first division occurs when microspores form the two nuclei and the generative nuclei and the second division is going to occur when generative nuclei divides into two male gametes so the two nuclear division is involved in the formation of micro gametogenesis so that is all as far as the entire micro gametogenesis